I am not going to pull this apart again. I am not going to pull this apart again. <laughs> this is how we win. For today's challenge, we're going to have three individuals compete to build a skyscraper. One, an architect, another, an engineer, and the third, a professional Lego builder. And a professor of architecture come critique and review what we've all built. And today, we'll be using Lego bricks to build a duck. What? No, an Eiffel Tower. We're building the Eiffel Tower out of Lego bricks. Eiffel had two years to build this thing. I have one hour to make it look as much like the Eiffel Tower as I can. Appropriately, it's, it's a work of architecture and uh, a marvel of engineering. And we'll be using this 1500 piece Lego base kit. Nope, wrong side. So just like that, let's get started. I is this a competition though? Is it, I mean, this is fun. I don't compete, I play with Lego, I create art. For me, this is just fun. Well, they just sit around and play with Legos all day. What do they know about actually building things? Yeah, I'm gonna regret that instantly. Okay, the time starts now. The Eiffel Tower apparently had over 1,500 design drawings or over 3,500 detailed drawings, but we're gonna have one drawing here. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So the Eiffel Tower, despite it being so tall, has three floors. The trusses continue down each side, and then this large arc or arch that exists in the bottom here. The structure is normally hidden by the skin or whatever the architect wants on the outside. In this case, Gustav Eiffel designed a structure to be exposed and to show its beauty and its strength. Now, what I'm doing here is drawing the Eiffel Tower as I understand it. And in fact, the way I'm gonna build it is upside down. Meaning, I'll start at the top and work my way down. On the third level is actually a private apartment that belonged to Gustav Eiffel. But he, man, was a genius. He was a, an engineer, architect. It was meant to be up just for the World's Fair. The, uh, the city of Paris had allocated 1.5 million francs to build the tower. They only paid the uh, 1.5 million and then he paid the rest himself. And they had estimated it would cost them about six and a half million francs. Well, they negotiated to keep the tower up for 20 years. And then he paid it off within a few years and profited on the rest from the admission fee of people going up. We're quite lucky to still have it today because many times in its history it was meant to have been taken down. I should get extra time because we paused for this history les lesson, right? Tower is approximately, is over 300 meters. So let's, let's just say a thousand feet. And then all this is lattice work, beams, columns, diagonal bracing. This is about 400 feet wide. Again, I should be doing this in meters. All right, I think we've got enough time to get started. I am ready to start building. What do we got here? So while I build, I usually have pop music playing, so please start that. Thank you. So I started sculpting out of Lego. It was later in life, and uh, it became my medium of choice. Eventually, I left the law firm behind and became a full-time artist, where I've created hundreds of works of art, all out of Lego bricks. Now, the first thing you do when you build something, actually, I lost two. Here we go. You have to make sure you put it in the right spot. The center is right here. So we're going to use that as our survey point. It's much easier to move a dot than it is to move a whole building. I'm going to try to get that arch in that bottom level because I think that's one of the more significant factors. I don't know if it's going to be very big. Like I can just tell I'm going to fly through these bricks. The Eiffel Tower is painted brown every seven years. It takes 18 months to complete the entire painting of the Eiffel Tower. I'm going total rainbow on this. Uh, wait a minute, am I off by one? One, two, three, four, five. One. Yep, I thought it didn't look level. Another thing we want to do is be level. <laughs> so I may not win the contest for the prettiest Eiffel Tower, but I'll win the contest for being in the right spot. Why does that not look right? One, two, three, four, five, six. One. Ah, I found it. As much as I know a little bit about the Eiffel Tower and have seen the Eiffel Tower, I have not built the Eiffel Tower out of Legos. All right, let, how does this look? Terrible. Okay, I'm getting out my bricks. I'm getting out my bricks. All righty, I'm happy about this. Right, next section. It's happening. <laughs> We're running out of pieces that I need. So Gustav Eiffel, who was the engineer behind the Eiffel Tower, originally wanted to do it in rainbow colors. And uh, the people of France said, no, all black. Time check, please. What? Because we're running out of time. So for those of you who missed it, 
Uh, the director walked in to move the Lego model into frame a little better. You know what the fun part of Lego is? That's what happens. You can just rebuild it. <laughs> Hope there are no people down here. I'm gonna get rid of this one. Just sit it right on here. These are very flexible, and that makes it difficult. We're now up to the last level. If I get a couple more of these arches, I could... I really want to incorporate them on two sides, so I'm going to do it. And I will not regret this. I am not going to pull this apart again. I am not going to pull this apart again. I am not going to pull this apart again. I really want to pull this apart again. I think that right there... Whoa! Nope. Yeah, that right there is going to win me the competition. That right there, you see that? This is how we win. Well, we're, getting, we're getting higher. The piece that saved me, a square piece. As I said, this is symmetrical, and I'm trying to make it as symmetrical as possible, and I've wasted time trying to make it symmetrical. And now we put a little border around here so that people don't fall off when they're walking up there. Number one code in professional engineer is the safety of people. Okay, so I'm gonna just set that here. Uh, that was the director again. One more of these and I take it apart. One more of these, one more of these. Oh, I found one more of these. I almost regret that. Oh, yep, we expected that. I'm gonna go buy a lottery ticket. I mean, the arches are making it look a little too castle-like. All that effort, I don't like them. I'm gonna remove them. Oh, come. I tried to do something to make it look better. What the hell happened here? One, two, three, four, five. In trying to adjust something minor, we had a major collapse. Now it's, I made it symmetrical, it's a little bit too wide, so I've got to make up a beam to go all the way across. This has become a little harder than I anticipated because I, I took on a scale that's probably, I want to stand up. Can I stand up? Oh, he's up, he's up. Oh, here we go, let's not do that. I could say now that I'm re I've retired, hopefully, no, maybe some Lego people got killed, but. Oh, the flag, I forgot about it. How do I get that up there? Can I use my chewing gum? No, that's disgusting. Nope. Is there a one minute countdown? One minute. Okay. I've got no option. I'm sorry, Lego friends. The French hate gum as well. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, please, come on. There we go. <laughs> I'm under pressure, that's it. Does that break the rules? And that's time. I think we're good, I'm happy. Just make sure no one touches the flag because uh, my germs are on it. Whew. I think I did okay. Did I beat the architect? I don't know, but I'm happy. Viva la France. This has been terrifying, um, but slightly rewarding in a way. You know, perhaps the, the Lego professional builder might have a better use of other bricks and could go for a larger size. If I could change anything, I think I would have expanded the base out just a little more. I think I've got a pretty good contender right here. My name is Jacob Rydell. I'm an assistant professor in practice in architecture. I don't know who built which one of these. Look forward to trying to figure that out. Let's look at the first build. So this one, say on the fidelity score or accuracy, really getting at general profile of the Eiffel Tower with feels more like the Eiffel Tower than I would have expected proportionally. I also can't help but notice that the detail of a, of a French flag. Uh, I don't know if this is, you know, a, if it gets points taken off because it looks like they use bubble gum, but is exuberant and fun and frankly, you know, shows kind of some ingenuity on the So looking at this one, first of all, I, I think that the, the legs are modeled very nicely, the arches, on each side. The crenellations at the top, you know, the observation deck. It does kind of lack the graceful taper that the Eiffel Tower has. It feels ornamental in a way that the original Eiffel Tower also has. It actually shows an incredible amount of attention. The structure works. You can kind of just see it at the base. Clearly, uh, my first reaction to that design is that it's clearly the work of someone who is uh, very experienced in working with Legos. It's proportionally very close to what the actual Eiffel Tower's proportions are. It captures the kind of overall profile. 
this design is nearly like looks like somewhere between five to five and a half feet tall. So um, how how they did that? It looks like if you look closely, you can see it's just through a very efficient use of the material. Kind of all the colors of the rainbow are represented, going all the way up the tower. That's not like the actual Eiffel Tower. You know, maybe this would be a kind of a beautiful addition to the skyline of Paris too. If we have to pick a winner, I'll let those of you in the comments section debate that. You know, different, they shine in different ways. At the end of the day, that's the whole wonderful thing about Legos and just, you know, building things like this in general is it's not about winning and losing. You know, it's about bringing your creativity, your ingenuity, your ideas to the table and just spending time with, you know, the bricks and yourself and creating something. I thank you, mic drop, and I'm out of here. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, hit that subscribe button. And I wish them luck, but unless they're French, they might struggle. This is, I got the home court advantage.